I'd like to call to order the uh, annual village meeting in the village of Woodstock um, on uh, March 15th, 2022, uh, public informational meeting. And um, normally we would have a moderator at this meeting, um, and that our moderator is Greg Camp. But because there is no votes being taken tonight, there are no votes being taken tonight, um, it's simply informational. We didn't think that was necessary, and Greg was, was in agreement with that. Um, but um, hopefully next year, Greg will be here moderating, and it will be live voting, and that's <laughs> my, my great hope for next year. Um, but being a hybrid uh, version this year, it's informational only. So I'll be reading the warning, and then uh, my fellow trustees will be explaining different parts uh, as we get along through the warning. So I will start by reading the warning, and uh, to begin with, the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters in the village of Woodstock, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby warned to meet on Zoom or in person. On the 15th day of March 2022 at 6.30 p.m., for the purpose of explaining the articles that would be voted upon by Australian ballot. No changes to the articles can be made during this meeting. Due to COVID-19, all articles will be voted on by Australian ballot. We will be happy to uh, take questions, however, as we move along. Um, and furthermore, the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters in the village of Woodstock, Vermont, County of Windsor, are hereby warned to vote at the town hall on the 24th day of March 2022 at 7 a.m. continuing until 7 p.m. for the purpose of transacting during that time voting by Australian ballot. So, Article 1 is to elect village officers for the ensuing year as required by law. Now, this year, normally those elections other than for trustee would occur here and now. As I stated, that will not occur tonight. If you would like, to, I will tell you who is interested in running for these different positions. If you would like to write them in, you are eligible to do that on the 24th. Um, but other than otherwise, uh, if no others are not elected by that manner, we will be appointing people to this position for a one-year term. For moderator, it uh, Greg Camp, if you'd like to write Greg in, please do. He's been a wonderful moderator, and we will, uh, so we will um, name him if he is not elected by that means. For, for clerk, Don Wheeler, who has done so for many years. Don will be here on the 24th to uh, lead the, uh, the voting uh, that night, as well as to swear in new trustees. Running for a three-year term, and, and this name will appear on, on the ballot, is Brenda Blakeman. And Brenda is with us, of course, and um, is a returning uh, trustee. Uh, uh, running for a two-year term, Gabe DeLeon, and Gabe will be uh, new to the board if he's a uh, uh, if he's elected and uh, he's running for a two-year term, please con consider w uh, coming to vote um, for these very qualified candidates. Treasurer Charles Degner, who is our current treasurer, and again, uh, please write Charles in. Um, if not, we will appoint him. Trustee of Public Funds currently is Jill Davies, and again, please write Jill in, uh, 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 unless there's someone else you'd rather write in. Uh, but um, we will appoint Jill if she's not elected by that means. She has done a very good job for us um, in that position. Um, auditors, uh, we have one volunteer, Stephen Stunts, who would like to be uh, an auditor um, for the village and um, so please feel free to write Stephen's name in. Um, and if you have any other ideas, there's a second auditor position that is open. So if you think someone would be good at that, please write that name in. Um, and that is Article 1. Article 2, to fix the annual compensation. Are there any questions about Article 1? Hearing none, we'll move on to Article 2. 
To fix the annual compensation for the elected village officers, moderator, $50 per meeting, treasurer, $1,500 per year, and clerk, $400 per year. Any questions on Article 2? Moving along, Article 3, to see if the village will vote to collect the village general taxes on real estate and all other taxes levied through the treasurer under the provisions of Title 32 VSA Chapter 133 and fix the date of payment as of November 4th, 2022 and May 5th, 2023 and to require payment to be received by the town office by close of business on those dates. Please be aware that this year, postmarking your, uh, your, your post postmarking your payment will not count unless it's received by that date. That's a change from the past. It must be in on by those dates. Um, can't be postmarked on that due date without risk of the penalty. Any questions? Article three. Hearing none. Article 4, to see if the village will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Trustees to borrow money if necessary in anticipation of taxes for fiscal year 2022-2023 to defray current expenses and debt of the village. Now, Article 5, and this one we will take a pause on. All right, but no, let me read it first. To see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,384,722.60 and raise by taxation the sum of $599,487.60 to pay the current expenses and debt of the village. I'd like to point out that on uh, the village report, you will see a listing under there that comes up to that total, and it separates the, uh, that, uh, that total out uh, with trees, $20,000, general government, $241,229.25, boards and agencies, $115,245.85, village highway, 50000 Village Police, 953,297.5, and Trustee Contingency, $5,000, for a total of $1,384,772.60. I'd like to point out that this year, um, well, first of all, be, you should be aware the Village Highway is a pass-through amount as uh, the highway department is now run through the select board, the town of Woodstock, um, but we, we send those funds over to them. Um, now, I wanna point out that trees for $20,000 is within our budget for the first time. It has been a special article all unto itself in the past. However, Due to the fact that we are now starting to deal with, and we'll be continuing to deal with, the emerald ash borer disease, the trustees thought it would be prudent to have that in our budget going forward, as uh, we are all concerned and we need to take action on that, in not only in the near future, the very near future. Um, I, I, before we move on to explaining some of the other things, I would like to let you know how Don Wheeler, our tree warden, uh, plans to spend the $20,000 if that's approved by the voters as part of our budget. Um, the initial inoculation of ash trees for emerald ash borer, he has $8,000 that he would like to set aside. Pruning. This year, he did it on other streets last year, this year, North Park Street, Church Street, and River Street, $5,000. Planting for replacements on Pleasant, Central, and Elm, $3,000. A contingency for pest control, any storm damage that occurs, a total of $2,000. And fertilizing, $2,000, to bring us up to $20,000. Now, this will not cover all of the ash trees that exist in the village that we would like to protect. A. B, if, this, if the, 
this is approved um, by the voters on the 24th, that money goes into effect the new fiscal year, July 1st. So the trustees have talked with um, the trustee of our public funds, Jill Davies, about this. And Jill had a, a very good suggestion, which we all agreed with, which was we may want to tap into the um, Orly Whitcomb Fund, uh, and which currently has a balance of $88,965 in it. We may want to allocate that this spring to inoculate trees, and we will be, um, rather than borrowing money against the, bu the budget, um, because the $20,000 from last year's has been spent already for tree care. Um, so that's, we have the monies at our disposal to take care of that. If, we, if, if the monies would go into what he's to covering more trees next year, uh, for the emerald ash borer, as well as the other list I just gave you. That's, that starts in July. Um, so um, just to be aware, that's something that's on our mind. Now, the rest of the article, we'll go into general government, and the highlights um, of general government um, are going to be covered by Bill, by Bill Corson. So Bill, would you please? Wait, Jeff, can I just point something out? Uh, <coughs> This figure right here, 722, does not match this one right down here, 772. Uh-oh, there's a typo. That was just discovered. I can't believe it. 722. Which one's correct? 772. Uh, yeah, it's the bottom. So, so, what's in the budget. so the bottom figure. Um, yeah, I can, I, let me calculate from that. Daphne Lowe has just found a, uh, an error of inverting some numbers. In Article 5, it says $1,384,722.60, but then below it says $1,384,772, a $50 difference in 60 cents. It's 772. The 772 figure is the correct figure, and we will need to make people aware of that. Thank you, Daphne. You're welcome. <coughs> you sure you want to not run? Again? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good catch. Um, all right. So um, any questions before we get into the details, which we're about to do? If not, Bill Corson will tell you the highlights of the general government section of the budget, which is for a total of $241,229.25. Sure. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bill Corson, one of the trustees. Happy to talk to you a little bit about the general government part of the budget for this coming year. Um, expenditures, uh, 241229.25, as Jeffrey said. That is comprised of many different parts of our government body. And uh, I'd like to note to start with that that's considerably lower than last year. So we actually were able to bring that figure down by the vicinity of $23,891. So that's really good news. Um, where that comes from in the details of the budget is uh, under the trustee section of the administration, we were able to lower legal fees from $10,000 down to $4,000. That's mainly because we don't have union negotiations that we had to deal with last year. So there's a significant chunk taken out of the budget there. We're also able to remove lobbyists from the line items because uh, that's not needed in the upcoming year. So together, that plus some miscellaneous things in that category, we're lowering the budget by about $17,320 in that alone. Other places under office administration, we found that there was a lot of things that were budgeted too high last year that didn't be needed to be so. So we reduced that from 11,150 to 7,750. Uh, savings about $3,400 there. So that's the second place where the expenses were reduced. Uh, the third and final place that's of, of major note is under the capital reserve. We didn't feel necessary to uh, fund the capital reserve for compensation for unused and sick pay. Quite as much, reduced from $30,000 down to $25,000. Uh, that's a fund that's needed to um, take care of employees when they leave. If there's unpaid uh, sick days and unpaid um, 
vacation days, that kind of thing. And um, it's anticipated that we will need to use that uh, in the future, even though there's been a change, I believe, into the union contract uh, going forward that doesn't allow that. So uh, that's the summary of all the reductions. Um, they don't come out exactly even if you add all those numbers up because there have been some increases. Uh, mainly, there's been a 3% increase to salaries and wages, which is pretty normal, I think, in the, in the uh, private sector at least as well. And that was voted in. And there's also inflation coming up on health insurance coverage for employee benefits. So that's about a 5% increase on those lines. But apart from that, the sum comes out favorable for general government, uh, down about 23,000 some odd dollars, and um, the revenue stays fairly st stable, a much smaller number, 11,825, and that's derived mainly from the National Park Land Trust and some miscellaneous fees and permits that we obtain. So that's the good news on general government. Questions that I could help there, anybody? On Zoom or anything? Hearing none. Okay. We'll move. We'll move along. Um, and the next section um, would be the police, uh, the village police, and uh, Seton McElroy will go through details on that okay, great. section. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, so you can see in Article 5 where the budgets are broken down, um, we've allocated $953,297.50 for the Village Police for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, this is up a little bit from last year's budget, um, but it's actually down from what our actual was. Um, there were not any major th um, changes in these. Um, most of the increases comes to uh, comes from the fact that People are receiving their regular wages. Most, uh, some of those are, of course, union wages, um, but that is obviously a cost of living um, and well within the bounds of where it should be. Um, we were able to, with Robbie, of course, uh, reduce in some spots um, some of the dues, subs, and meetings. Um, we were able to reduce a little bit. Um, and then you'll see throughout here, mm. there's a couple of other, most places we were able to um, sort of stay the same. Um, but uh, some of them we were able to reduce a little bit. Um, some of the things that are worthwhile noting is that in this year a new police cruiser was purchased. Um, that was done um, with funds that had been put in a capital reserve um, as well as when the former police cruiser was sold, there was, um, they got money for that. Um, so it was something that we had saved for and also something that we traded in for. So it was not the full amount. Um, on top of that, um, the police cruiser has to be uh, fitted um, for everything that our police officers need. And, um, uh, and also with the new building, which is coming along nicely, there are a couple of odds and ends that need to be added there as well. Um, so there are a couple of little things that really have to do with the fact that there's a new building and there's a new uh, car that the police officers are using. Um, there are a couple of things in here. There's um, a lot of pass-throughs to keep in mind. So obviously the village is the one that manages the police, but the town pays the village for the police. Um, so obviously some of the money is deferred there. Also, um, our police chief is really great about getting grants. So you'll see throughout here, there are times when there are um, grants from the state for like DUI checkpoints, seatbelt checkpoints, things like those. Um, so those are a lot of things that end up being um, cost neutral, but uh, obviously a benefit for our town. Robbie, am I missing anything? Uh, no. uh, just equipment funds that we get through equipment grants with the VLCT passive. Okay, there you go. So he said also equipment funds that he's getting from VLCT. So Robbie's out there hustling, trying to get money. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Seton. Yeah. Uh, any, any questions regarding the uh, village police section of the budget on Article 5? Hearing none, let's move along. The uh, last piece of that total figure that we've read to you uh, is the trustees' contingency of $5,000, and that's for unforeseen circumstances that we uh, may have to use and don't know what we'd have to use it for, but that's, those funds would be available to, to use in that way. So that is Article 5. Article 6, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of auditing the public trust funds and approve such expenditure from income of the trust fund. That's one of uh, 
three dollar figures in, in these uh, articles, that um, two of which do not involve taxpayer money, but rather are from uh, income of the fund itself. Article 7, to see if the village will authorize cannabis retailers in the village pursuant to 7 VSA 863. This is an extremely important article this year. And on the 24th, I hope we have a much greater attendance than we have tonight for the information meeting. Do you want me to talk a little bit about cannabis? Um, yeah, I just want to state, uh, I'll, I'll just state and you can fill in anything sure. I miss. Sounds good. We have uh, determined with the help of uh, legal advice from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns that the municipality of the village of Woodstock will have to either opt in or opt out if we put this up to a vote, and we have put it on the ballot, whether such retailers will be authorized to exist in the village or not. Now, the town has already voted to opt in. So we know that they are authorized to exist in the town. If the village opts in, they will be authorized to exist in the village as well. If the village opts out, and votes against cannabis retailers, there will be no retailers in the village of Woodstock. That's an important distinction, even though we are obviously a part of the town of Woodstock as a municipality, the way things are, are uh, read in the, the way the state has laid it out, village municipalities as well as town municipalities must opt in or out if they choose to um, engage in that vote at all. So um, it's really important for those who want it to happen to vote, and it's really important for those who don't want it to happen to vote. <laughs> That's the fairest thing I can say. Um, and, and Seton, who has worked on this committee um, looking into this, um, might have more to add um, about this, about um, some of the details involving um, whether it's beneficial or not for the village to engage in this. Thanks, Jeffrey. Um, so I was a member of first the Woodstock Cannabis Committee, which looked at the question of whether the, the village and town should uh, take a vote on it um, before even deciding yes or no if we should even put it on the ballot. Uh, we provided information last year to both boards. Obviously, both boards decided to put it on the ballot. That uh, committee uh, disbanded after the decisions were made, and then a new commission was put together. So the new commission um, really tried to look at, and it was made, it's made up of citizens of both the, the village and the town. There's three from the town and three from the village. And what we really wanted to do was look at what, what does retail cannabis really mean? Um, you know, does it mean that you can you know, stop into Max and you know, grab some cannabis? And the answer is no. Um, but there are lots of, lots of layers, lots of restrictions that go along with having retail cannabis. Um, so that commission really wanted to provide more information to the trustees, to the select board, but ultimately, most importantly, to the voters of Woodstock so that they can make an informed opinion. Um, some of the things that we saw last year when we conducted a survey that people were concerned about was, uh, number one, was if the municipalities would receive any tax dollars from um, the sale of retail cannabis, and the answer is no. Um, there will be a 16% state tax, or 14% tax from the state on cannabis. Um, that combined with the normal 6% um, sales tax means that cannabis, retail cannabis will be taxed at 20%. Um, all of that money will go to the state. None of that uh, stays in Woodstock, in the village, or the town. Um, the only way that municipalities are able to um, tax uh, retail cannabis is if we had a sales and use tax. Um, on retail establishments, which obviously in the town we just voted down. So there is not an ability um, to make direct taxes. There is, of course, you know, it might increase tourism, it might increase shoppers, it might increase people going to other stores. Um, those are things that are certainly possibilities, but we can't exactly put a dollar figure on that. Um, something else that's important to know is that uh, so far, and the rules are changing constantly with the legislature, uh, but right now it looks like um, we will be capped at $100 for a license. So uh, municipalities, if they pass cannabis, are allowed to put together, are allowed to um, create their own application so that the retail has to go through not only the state but the local municipality. Um, we've decided that we want to do that. Um, the problem, not problem, but a sticking point is that 
um, we have been capped at $100 for an application fee. Um, the application fees for the state range from five to $10,000. Um, every year they are literally taxed on every single item that is in the store. Um, so there are lots, lots and lots of taxes and lots and lots of fees that are going to the state, um, but municipalities are not going to receive um, much of anything. Um, certainly we hope that it won't cost us too much money if we do allow for municipal sales. The things that we don't know yet are, um, you know, what would it do for traffic? Would there be any health and safety issues? We don't know. We certainly hope not. Um, but those are things that could uh, cost our municipality money that we would not be able to recoup in other ways. So those are things to keep in mind. Um, but also, but in terms of the health and safety aspect, it is worth knowing that there is there are lots of security procedures that are required. Um, every single person who works in retail cannabis has to have their own personal license. The person who drives it from place to place has to have their own license. Um, so certainly background checks are done um, and there is a lot in terms of safety that has been thought about. So if safety is your main concern, I, I can tell you there's a lot of red tape in terms of safety. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that um, the, the state legislature has made it such that um, big cannabis, which are sort of the big companies throughout the, the country um, that already have medicinal dispensaries, um, they will be limited to only one dispensary. Um, so it's not like you could have McDonald's and have like 20 McDonald's in Vermont. If you have one cannabis retail spot, that is the only one you can have. So it really does encourage small businesses, people who are already in the cannabis business to get into it. Um, so if there's a concern about like a mic cannabis coming to Woodstock, that should not be a concern um, because the law does not um, allow any of that. Um, and of course, there's also a state um, cannabis control board that will constantly be monitoring things and certainly um, in conjunction with our local police um, working on any sort of violations that happen. So there are lots of layers there. Um, and also, I would highly encourage people to check on the town website. There is a posting up there of with FAQs that the commission has put together. So if you've got any questions, you know, certainly feel free to check that out or just contact Town Hall and somebody on the commission can certainly answer your questions. Thank you, Seton. You're welcome. I'd, I'd point out one, one other safety concern. Oh, yes. Just one other, which is uh, to be aware, and again, this would be uh, an additional work potentially for our police force, is that cannabis cannot be smoked publicly. That's correct. It's or, treated like cigarettes. Or, yeah, or in most of the hotel rooms in Woodstock as well. And that, that would require additional policing. Uh, it's anticipated that the majority of the business in a town like Woodstock would be generated by uh, visitors to Woodstock if for a dispensary such as this. So that's another thing to keep in mind um, when if we take that on. Thank you for that very You're good welcome. report, Seton. Okay, any questions regarding that article? Okay, hearing none, we're moving along. Um, article eight, to see if the village will vote to raise and appropriate from taxes the sum of $3,000 for the purpose of village beautification projects and seasonal decorations. This money to be spent at the decoration, at the discretion. <laughs> I'm decorating, I'm decorating. This money to be spent at the discretion of the Board of Village Trustees. Uh, I will point out that uh, in the past, this has be always been an article for $5,000, and we've reduced it to $3,000 this year, again, to keep the budget down as much as we possibly can. Any questions regarding that article? Hearing none. Article 9, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of paying the trustee of public funds for services rendered and approve such expenditure from income of the trust funds. Again, this would not be taxpayer money so much as it would be uh, interest from the trust funds itself. And our current trustee of public funds, Jill Davies, besides doing an excellent job, has already stated she uh, would not be accepting those funds, so that fund would even grow by that amount. Another reason to uh, pencil her in, please. <laughs> um, so that's uh, all of the articles. I will point out something just so you're aware of how this is affecting us in terms of um, taxation. 
the, uh, the amount to be raised through taxes that's proposed in our budget of $599,487.60 is 3.6% increase over fiscal year 2022. And that includes the $20,000, which previously was a special article. So the special articles will only, uh, if approved, will only re increase over that figure by a grand total of $3,000. Um, so we've all worked really hard to keep this budget as low as we can. That's what we would expect. How this would affect your pocketbooks, let me explain that. Uh, this is the anticipated tax, tax rate per home value of $100,000. The increase over last year's village taxes would be $8.49. So if your home was valued at $500,000, the increase in taxes over last year's village taxes would be $42.45, and so on and so forth. Less if it's less than 500,000, more if it's more, but only by $8.49 per $100,000. So that uh, can help folks understand how it will affect their pocketbook. Can that go on the website? And if it's a finalized, I don't know if that's a okay. finalized figure. That's the one we're working with right now. Yeah, I don't think that is. Yeah. That, okay. It's, it's, it's I think it would be helpful for final. people. Yeah, it's, it's, not not it's not been finalized yet, it's but it's likely to. That's the working tax rate, uh, as far as we know, as of today. Uh, but it's a good idea once we can finalize okay. it. Uh, very good idea. So um, that is uh, everything that's in our warning. There, I. I uh, I urge people to read the whole report because there's other interesting reports within within that. And the dedication this year is for the is for Teagle's Landing, which we inaugurated in July of 2021, and um, we all get to enjoy as soon as the ice goes away <laughs> and the barrier comes down. Um, so this is perhaps the smallest village meeting in history uh, of modern history. And, and the quickest one, so it's both good and bad. Um, <laughs> but I certainly hope we get a, a good attendance for the voting, and I think is very important because, um, uh, because of the cannabis issue, and and also because we have some very qualified people uh, running for office. Um, and uh, are there any questions regarding anything we've discussed tonight? Hearing none, amazing. This is fantastic. I've had a really long day, and this is a good, uh, good ending for me. Uh, two and a half hours of dental work. Uh, oh, no. Very busy at the store with certain things. I want to take a moment before we adjourn to thank Daphne Lowe, who has been a terrific addition to this board, and we are all very sorry that, that Daphne um, has decided not to um, run again, at least now. <laughs> but she has told me that she is willing to help if we have any special need. Daphne, thank you so much from all of us You're on the board. most welcome, and thank you for your support. You're, you are thank welcome. You. We have a, a little gift for you. We Aww. don't need to do it online, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, we, we can um, entertain a motion to adjourn at this point. Let Daphne do it. Would you oh, like to sure. make a motion? I move Daphne. to adjourn. <laughs> motion made by Daphne Lowe to adjourn. Is there a second? Seconded by Bill Torson. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have Thank a lovely you. evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Okay.